Good morning everyone and thank you for joining me today. Now I'm up in my bedroom today on this lovely cushion that I bought which I, I showed you on Instagram. It's so comfortable. Anyway, there's a reason, there's a reason that I've got no makeup on. Well, there's two actually. One is I'm doing a live at one o'clock, which is when I apply my makeup. So you see me warts and all, but also because I really wanted to do a warts and all video this morning um, to talk to you about how to powder like a pro. And it's a subject that I stumbled on when I was doing another video. I've been doing a whole batch of videos this week so that I can line them up and put them out each day for you. Um, and I've decided that's the way I want to go. So be prepared. There's going to be lots of videos coming soon. Um, and um, I stumbled on a subject which is about powdering. So you may have seen me talk about this because... I'll probably put that video out first on the Lisa Eldridge Foundation. But I thought I really want to drill down a little bit more on this so that people get an understanding. So let me just talk about it. So when uh, when I was 18, just to remind you all, I did some makeup artistry training. But the training was about stage makeup. It wasn't like how to do somebody up for a wedding looking all, you know, minimal and and glowing it was it was concentrated on stage makeup and it was when I was training to be an opera singer but the great thing about that training that I did was that it was all about shadow and light because obviously when you're on stage everything is accentuated and you have to it, with makeup you have to accentuate everything when you're on stage because it's got to be so much more apparent when you're on stage than it would be in real life. So it gave me a really solid background in makeup and how to make the best of your features because it's all about looking at light and shade. So this this video is about... Um, how to powder like a pro to look more youthful and to look more awake. And I just wanted to go, because I did briefly talk about this, I wanted to kind of show you this video here. I'm going to show it you just to explain what I was talking about the other day when I talked about emojis to give you idea about how we age what happens to our faces obviously every face is different but there's a few kind of common themes themes that actually start to be more accentuated as we age so i'm going to go into that next okay this is really annoying because i can't show you the whole screen but as you can see, when you go to select age on your emoji, this is an emoji screen where you're doing it and you go through, you can see that the face, as you go to older ages, that the face shape changes. OK, now I'm going to show you another section of the same video coming up. Okay, so you can't see what I'm doing below because it won't show you the full screen. But that's the youngest face. And then that is getting a bit older, less infant-like. And then you'll see when I select the oldest age range to do my face, you will see, look at the difference. Can you see what they add in terms of shadow? So I screenshot the youngest selection face. For an emoji so this is when you tap on the youngest face obviously very round face very infantile um no kind of shadows really apart from just around the nose um, and that's what it looks like now this is what happens when i select the oldest face now you can see that the shadows around the nose are more pronounced you've then got the um the shadows underneath the eyes where the orbital bone is and you've got your nasolabial folds 
they're all more pronounced, which is what makes the emoji look older. And this is me just showing you what I mean by this. So that's where some of the shadows are more pronounced. They've also put a few little lines around the side of the eyes. And they've also done the nasolabial folds, just so that you know what we're talking about. Okay, so let's depress myself completely by showing you this picture of me at the age of about 15. I wish you could see the whole photograph. It's just not going to let me zoom in on it. Um, but the, basically, I was dressed like, you know, Frankie goes to Hollywood, relax kind of era. Um, that's my mum just in the corner. But anyway, forget all that. You can see there that I don't really have any of that dipping under my eyes around the orbital bone because I'm very young. I'm only 15. And yes, you can see my nasolabial folds, but only because I'm smiling. And I think you can probably see they're really plumped up. And if I was actually giving a typical teenage scowl, that basically you wouldn't be able to see those if I wasn't smiling. Now we're going to fast forward 16 years to when I was 31. And as you can see, still a lit there's a little bit more of a shadow under the orbital bone than when I was 15, quite understandably. And again, I'm smiling, so you can see the nasolabial folds. But again, you can probably see that they're not really very pronounced. Um, and that so there's not that much shadow going on around those areas of my face. Oh boy, isn't this depressing. But th there is a really good reason for me showing you this, which is it's so that we can talk about light and shadow on the face and how you can look more rested and more youth youthful. Wow, I'm being so unkind to myself, aren't I? But this is a picture without makeup. Obviously, the last two were with makeup, but this one is without makeup taken a couple of days ago. And I've deliberately picked one where I'm not smiling because you can see that even when I'm not smiling, you can see those nasolabial folds. And that is from years of smiling. So I'm not unhappy about having them because if I had that face for the last 50 years of my life, then I probably wouldn't have those folds. They're all part of living. And so I'm not putting myself down and neither should you. OK, but you can see where the shadows are. The shadows are basically underneath that orbital bone. You can see a shadow and a dip and you can see the shadows around the nasolabial folds. I don't really have any of the, the lines at the side of my eyes. I do have them underneath, as you can see, but I don't have them really yet, thankfully, at the side of my eyes. So... With all of that, I hope that was helpful. We are now going to get on to talking about the shadows and what we can do about them. Okay, I've moved location, as you can see. Um, but I just wanted to now get into why is Ali talking about powder and shadows and not concealer? Very good question. Well done for asking it. OK, and of course, concealer is going to get rid of the darkness in the shadows. But I'm going to show you another picture now. I've just been going through my pictures so I can highlight what it is that I'm trying to get at with powder. So I deliberately picked this photograph, another unflattering picture of me. Um, I just applied moisturiser on my face so you can actually accentuate all the light and if you look at where the light is, it's also accentuating where those shadows are on my face, which is why I want to talk to you about how much powder can help. So let's take this a little step further, shall we? So if you look at this photograph again, I'm just going to um, show you on screen that it's not just about where the shadows are, but where the light is reflecting around the shadows. Um, you can't see it as well under my eyes, but 
it's there, right? So it's not just about the shadows, it's about the light reflection around the shadows that's accentuating the shadows. So it's still of me in the video, so you can see all, where all the light is reflecting. Take a note of where all the light is reflecting, and that's what we're going to work on. Okay, so you can see there that I've got where that light is. So I'm going to take the brush, and I'm going to press it in. Now, what's even better, actually, than a brush is sometimes if you get one of those powder puffs and press and roll. And you're just, you're aiming for that little bit of light around the shadow. And um, you're going to see in a minute just what a difference it makes to one side of the face. So I slowed some of this down and speeded some of it up. Just so that I could make the points that I was going to make. So look, now you can see that side with the shine and that side without the shine. How much of a difference does that make to the shadow? I know I'm repeating myself, but I just want to emphasise what a big difference it makes. Okay, so you can see me there. And now that's me having done both sides. Now that fold is a little bit deeper on that side, but you can still see that it makes a difference. Okay, now we've done that. Um, I'm going to focus on the eyes. Now, if you look at this picture, have a look at the shine that's under my eyes. I'm going to point it out a little bit more. You can see two little semicircles of light under the shadow on my eye. So I'm just drawing it here can you, so that you can see what I'm talking about. There, you see, there's a little semicircle of light there and a little semicircle of light there. And that is actually making the shadow look worse. So I'm now going to do exactly the same here. And I'm going to press and roll that powder into that shadow. And again, it's just amazing the difference that it makes. So you don't have to, it doesn't have to all be done with concealer. Now I did use the Lisa Eldridge foundation as a concealer so I've already concealed but you can see that that makes a big difference with the powder all right now I've zoomed in and stopped on this can you see that there is light shining on my cheekbone as well there and I wanted to make a little point about this because it's something to do with when you highlight as well either using a highlighting powder or a liquid highlighter to just highlight the fact. Here we go, this little bit here. When you're using your highlighter, be very careful about putting it in this area because it is just underneath where that ridge is. So you're going to accentuate the shadow by putting highlighter there. Put it further up. And so this is me now powdering under that other eye to get rid of that shine in that area so that you can see what both sides look like. Okay, so now that I've talked you through the, that, back to the studio, Ali. So that's it in a nutshell. Now you probably notice I've got different clothes on. It's the next day. Um, and I thought I better put some makeup on after all those completely unflattering photographs of me. But I hope that this has actually um, shown you how much powder can also help. It's not all about concealer. And um, I could have called that video, actually, I could have called this video, it's not all about concealer. Um, and I might put that in brackets. Um, so, a little bit of homework for you guys, apart from blending in your contour wand, right? A <laughs> little bit of homework for you guys. What I suggest everybody does is to take all your makeup off, put your moisturiser on, 
and then look at yourself in a good light so that you've got all the shine and you've got all the shadow that you can look at and have a look study your face right and and study you know these particularly these areas and the area under your eyes and see where those shadows are where the light is because light is the opposite to shadow so where there's shadow, there's often light around it that's actually making the shadow look worse. So look at all where the light is. Even take the photograph, map it out like I did. Have a look at it. And then you'll realise that you perhaps don't need to use as much concealer, that you can actually do a lot with powder. Now, any questions, do message me below. I hope this has been helpful. And if you'd like me to also do a kind of how to conceal like a pro, I shall do that. I think there's a lot more videos about concealing than there is about powdering. And so that's why I wanted to do this topic. Hope it's been helpful. Take care and thanks for tuning in again. Love you all. Bye bye. Mwah.